Welcome to Inspiring China, a channel that brings you insights of technology, business, and lifestyle. Don't forget to click the subscribe and notification button. Share if you like it. Your support is my motivation. Money has been part of our history for the last few thousand years after emerging from barter trades. Throughout this time, money has transformed into different forms and shapes, from cowrie shell, bronze coins, gold and silver ingots, paper money, promissory notes, bank notes, and minted coins, credit cards, and finally to electronic money that we use today. There is yet another digital evolution well underway once again, which will transform our society forever. That is to replace fiat currency, bank notes, and coins that the world has been familiar with for the past few centuries. It will become a digital form of a country's fiat currency when central bank no longer issues paper notes and minted coins, but instead issues electronic coins or account backed by full faith and credit by the government. It will be like virtual currencies, commonly known as cryptocurrencies, except that they are not government backed. Examples are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Dash, and others. The government backed digital currency is called central bank digital currency or CBDC. Why do we even need a CBDC? There are many reasons to that. There's an estimate of 22% of adults in the world without bank account or payment service account. The few that do are faced with astronomically high fees just to use their own money. The average cost to use an ATM in the United States is $4.92. We need a more efficient, more economical, and more inclusive financial system to address the world's needs. We need cheap and easy global payments. We need to bank the unbanked, and we need to do these things without middlemen, which was very well articulated by Travis Reader, founder and CTO at GoChain. There are more advantages to CBDC. Imagine the government savings in not printing and maintaining fiscal bills. With digital currency, the cost of issuing new currency is close to zero. Considering the pandemic, paper bills and coins become the virus carriers when digital currency would be a welcoming medium that minimizes exposure to health hazards. Also, digital currency has a high level of security against counterfeits. Across the globe, many countries have already started to explore the feasibility of CBDC implementation. The Chinese government first mentioned the development plan for sovereign digital currency in 2014 during a seminar by then PBOC Governor Zhao Xiaochun. Soon after the announcement, a research institute is established to focus on R&D of China's CBDC. By 2017, the central banks has piloted the blockchain-based digital commercial bills trading system as part of the digital currency application proof of concept. In 2020, China has announced the country's digital currency known as Digital Currency Electronic Payment or DCEP to go pilot in selected cities. DCEP is to replace M0 or currency in circulation. By early 2021, seven cities completed the trial with total transaction worth of $23 million over 54,000 businesses and stores. A downloadable digital wallet from smartphone were used during the pilot with the support of China's four largest banks. The next big trial will take place during the Beijing Winter Olympic Game in 2022. The DZ wallet operates just like Alipay and WeChat Pay. Users can top up the digital wallet by online banking or bank card. During the pilot period, the trial covers four different functions, top up, withdrawal, payment transfer, and payment via QR code. Two payment scenarios are also included, such as payment transfer by typing cell phone number and transfer between cell phones through near field communication or NFC without Wi Fi and bank account, a feature that other mobile payment operators do not have. There are more features that were not available for public test, for example, digital currency exchange, wallet management, and transaction tracking in parallel to all these DCEP efforts. Chengdu has already launched a blockchain-driven digital asset trading platform in 2019 to cater for cross-border trade between China and Europe. By 2023, about 20 pilot zones across the country will focus on the next generation of innovation, including artificial intelligence. Each year, internet and mobile phone fraud has cost the Chinese citizens and corporation $4.6 billion and $31 billion, respectively. To balance individual privacy and crime exposure, DCEP utilizes 
controllable anonymity, which means when trading with DSAP, both parties can be anonymous to the public, but PBOC could track the digital footprint for the combat of corruption, money laundering, tax evasions, and terrorist financing. DSAP's design is based on a two-tier and multi-scheme program that intends not to single out the optimal and sustainable technology roadmap. This provides the flexibility of adopting technical changes before it rolls out. Although blockchain has been ruled out for DSAP due to its limitation in handling large transaction volume, the application of blockchain and distributed ledger technology is still under R&D at the research lab. There are three links in the construct of digital currency, namely issuance, flow, and security. Commercial banks need to process digital currency and require core system enhancement. The same goes to points of sales that meet DSAP requirement, security, encryption, and new KYC certification also need to be integrated into the DSAP ecosystem that completes the end-to-end -end processing. The commercial opportunities within the digital currency ecosystem are enormous. While strategic partnership has been formed between PBOC Research Institute and Huawei, SenseTime, JD Digits, DD, Meituan, Bilibili, ByteDance, and State Grid. There are many technology firms in the local market have already openly expressed their interests of participation. These companies specialize in information security, banking technology, payment and wallet service, and payment and IC card equipment manufacturing. It is not hard to imagine the industry transformation effort required to make these up workable nationwide. This also has direct implications to companies, foreign and local, operating in China when DSAP is deployed. For example, how does financial and fintech products integrate with the DSAP ecosystem? And what is the regulatory requirement for handling digital currency instead of fiat money? For retailers, that could mean a new payment channel in addition to Alipay and WeChat Pay. To look further down the road, DSAP allows digital renminbi that operate as China's own cross-border banking system which fits nicely with the One Belt, One Road initiative. China can also contribute to driving the global standard for CBDC, which requires the world to participate. It is clear that CBDCs will power our economy of tomorrow, but there will be major geopolitical implications on cross-border trade, which is currently denominated in US dollars. The digitalization of the economy somehow needs to integrate between countries with different regulatory oversight. All of these are way beyond technology capability that requires international cooperation. Nevertheless, the introduction of CBDC will help boost crypto adoption in a society and will one day making the fiscal money obsolete. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more interesting topics and don't forget to leave your comments. See you in the next episode.